Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Nothing says betrayal like something you can catch. Today on our space, this cheater wanted it all the wife, the kids, the house, but he didn't account for the itch or that burning sensation. Husband hooked up with multiple women during my postpartum. Karma ruined him for life. I, female 34, am married to my husband, Stephen, male 35, after dating for five years. And it's been 12 years since our marriage. We're blessed with two daughters. Everything was going fine, and he was a very loving husband and father. In the last 12 years of marriage, we had our own share of worries and problems, but it was never so serious that I ever had to be worried about our relationship. Life was so much fun together, but ever since I gave birth to my second kid, I feel we've gotten disconnected. Nowadays, we barely talk. He hardly asks me about my days or tells me about his. It's not the same bond we used to have. During my postpartum phase, I confronted him about his behavior and our growing distance. He said he's upset because I was avoiding him in bed. I understand his urges. I confess that I wasn't avoiding him, but I'm not in a sound mental state to accept my maternity body. It's still a couple of weeks before I'm advised to get back to normal activities, but this time more than physical. I'm not mentally ready for it. My second pregnancy had been tough and delivery was even more terrible. I had developed gestational diabetes and gained some 30 pounds. After the delivery, my body is covered with a lot of stretch marks and loose fat skin sticking out from my belly. I got such a bad hair fall that barely any hair is left on my scalp. I can see my bright scalp from a distance in a mirror and it's disturbing. You know how terrible it feels to look at yourself in the mirror and find yourself in such a miserable state? I know for a fact that everyone goes through this and maturity says we should accept it. I had my first pregnancy, but things weren't as bad. It's not that I'm not trying, I am, but I don't know. I feel I'm not that pretty anymore. The worst part is I'm scared whether I'll ever be able to get my body and grace back. I don't know. No matter how hard I tried to convince myself that I got a beautiful daughter in exchange for this ugliness, it's difficult. I don't feel attractive anymore. Maybe that was also one of the reasons why I avoided intimacy with my husband. I was just not comfortable exposing myself in front of him. Maybe my insecurity. Stephen was supportive during my pregnancy, but after the delivery, he has become quite distant. Things started getting more complicated, and I couldn't sit and ignore his behavior. He's constantly pointing out my insecurity all the time that I should go to the gym and lose some weight. He's been so ignorant of the fact that I just gave birth to our baby after a tough pregnancy and a horrible labor. He's comparing me to other women and making negative comments on my body, which is hard to bear. He's like so-and-so also gave birth, but look at them. They're still hot and you look like a potato. If these mean comments were not enough, he started ignoring our daughters. I was the one taking care of my newborn, my toddler, and household stuff. Hopping to vaccine centers for the newborn all alone while he filled up my cup with millions of excuses. He would ignore our daughters and talk to me in the rudest way possible, which made me anxious and depressed. I tried talking to him about the issues. He told me the same old reason that he was agitated because of the lack of intimacy and suggested I should lose weight. So instead of taking care of my newborn, he wanted me to hit the gym and lose weight. I felt so lonely and it had a negative effect on my mental health. Things went on like this for days and now I was getting suspicious of his behavior. Whenever my friends or my cousins came to see me, he would act so caring and loving around them, showing them his funny side and laughing with them, complimenting their body. I don't even remember the last time he complimented me or even looked at me. All he did was remind me to go to the gym and lose some weight, like how beautiful I used to be, and now I've lost it. I was going through serious body dysmorphia. Whenever he was on his phone, he would look at Instagram model pictures, like pictures of girls in bikinis and comment on them. My friend sent me a screenshot of him commenting on a half-naked picture of a girl. This was getting out of hand, and I hated the feeling that crept in. The anxiety of how the love of your life for 12 years was eyeing other girls. When I confronted him, he was all defensive that it was just a comment and I was unnecessarily making a big deal out of it. I underwent therapy for a few months trying to improve my mental health. I got slightly better, and Steven's behavior also changed for the better. Everything was gradually getting better. One day, I decided to set the mood for the both of us. He looked kind of relaxed after months. We were making out, and in the middle of it, he said something that really messed with my head. He pulled my loose belly skin, saying, Ew, your stomach is sticking out. This is so disgusting. When are you going to lose weight? This belly pop is freaking me out. I was in tears. It really hurt, you know? I yelled at him to get the F out of the room. His face disgusted me after his mean comments. He realized that he had messed up pretty badly. He tried to cover up with his sorry but I yelled at him to get out of the room. He then left the room silently. I cried the whole night at his behavior. Like, how could anyone go this low? 
He was acting so cruel at this point, and I was in utter shock to see that. Like, he can't expect me to look like a model right after I gave birth to a whole human. All he cared about was sex. I was seriously struggling with my mental health and just needed some emotional support, you know? It was rough as hell. His apologies were just useless like him, and he never tried to sort things out, which only made everything fall apart. The next morning, I packed my stuff and was ready to leave before he woke up. When he saw my packed bags, he started crying and stuttered, asking for forgiveness, saying he was acting out of his mind. He claimed he could never hurt me and begged me for another chance, promising to fix everything as he loves me as well as his daughters. I told him that I needed space from him. His presence was tormenting me and I would be staying at my mom's until I healed. He looked completely devastated. Not sure if he was faking it or if he was really upset. I don't care. He insisted on driving me to mom's place. He spent some time with mom, also sweet and caring husband like he loved me and adored me. Such an imposter. For the last 12 years of marriage, he has been telling everyone how much he loves me. But when the actual test of time came, he faltered. He loved the beauty in me, and when it faded, my body disgusted him. I've been here for the last week, and he has been acting so sweet and loving, sending long paragraphs of love and hugs, checking on my health, video calling the girls, and sending me flowers. I've not yet decided anything so far. Currently, I'm just focusing on healing and getting back to being the strong person I was. Crying and begging and claiming that he could never hurt you even though he's been hurting you for far too long? Yeah. Bye! He's completely manipulating you into staying so he can try to maintain some sick facade he has in his head about the perfect family and perfect life. He's actually out of his mind to think that he can treat you that way, ever. Never mind postpartum. You just brought life into this world. You're the mother of his children. The body goes through wild and harsh things during pregnancy and birth, and to just condemn you for all of that is disgusting and unfair. His priorities are totally out of whack. Update 1 Thanks for all the love and support. Trust me, it really meant a lot. My life has only taken a downhill since then. My nightmare came true that piece of crap cheated on me with multiple women. While I was at my mom's, he acted so lovey and gave me his full attention. He would constantly text me, call me, FaceTime me, and play games on the phone with me. I really started trusting him in his efforts. He would send gifts and chocolates for us. He posted our family pictures with long captions of how much he loves and misses us. I really trusted him for the bare minimum. Stupid me. Days went on like this, and it was very wholesome. I was happy and got fooled by his actions. He was just trying to make a fool out of me so that way I wouldn't find him guilty of anything he was doing behind the bush. Like what? The audacity? Literally. I paid his bills when we were dating just for him to ditch me like that. From where do these men get the audacity to cheat on the women who did everything to make them happy? When he realized that things had gotten better between us, he gave me a surprise visit, saying he was there to pick us up. He could not live in that empty house alone. He wanted me and his daughters back. He brought flowers, chocolates, and gifts to win us back. My elder one got excited seeing her dad and all so cheerful. I fell for it. Man, I was literally simping for him at this point. When we came back to our place, it was nicely decorated, and he prepared me my favorite meal. We had our dinner, and then he gifted me a ring I had been eyeing for a long time. We were having a great time together. He would agree to whatever I said. Sometimes I felt he was overdoing it. I thought he was just covering up for his past mistakes by being this super sweet. We went on dates, and he used to bring me gifts regularly. Many things were pretty sus about him, and due to his love bombing, I didn't overanalyze anything and believed him. I tried to be a good wife and focus on healing and giving a shot to my relationship. He manipulated me, and I felt confident that now that everything was getting better and the past was just an ugly phase. We had romantic evenings with candles, wines, and roses but he never initiated sex. Even when I initiated it, he would calm me down saying I should be mentally prepared and not give in just because of him. He said he would wait until I was ready. Why would he not when he was getting it from everywhere? He was a total man whore at this point. After a month or so, he said he had to go on a business trip for a week and I didn't find it surprising because it was a usual thing. He was also normal while I was helping him pack and even while leaving, he was bombing me and the girls with kisses and hugs. But the moment he stepped out, he became strange. He never picked up my call and would call back on his own time. I thought he was busy, but then I found it very weird how he was always busy. Like if I had called him at 9 in the night, he wouldn't respond and would call me back around 1 in the night and sent me paragraphs at 4 in the morning telling me how much he loved me. Very unusual. Well, he came back after a week and looked as fresh as before. He spent his time on his phone as usual, but now I started noticing the freaking pattern. Stephen was continuously on the phone, giggling. 
and I felt the presence of someone else in his life. The instinct of a woman. He did pay attention to our daughters, but it was all an act. I noticed it so many times that he would just put an act that he was babysitting our daughter and playing with them, but in real, he would just be immersed in his phone. The girls would ask him something or cry over something, but he'll be in his own world. But when he sees me around, he keeps the phone aside and attends to the girls. There were times when I saw him ogling into bikini and nude models. It was disgusting to see him watching the video clips of these bikini models in front of my girls. Though the infant doesn't understand this, my elder one is eight and she's not dumb, but this pervert failed to understand that. I didn't ignore any bit of the red flags, but I was waiting for the right evidence to catch hold of him and destroy him. To be honest, divorcing on the basis that he was ogling on the models doesn't make a strong case. I'm not saying it is not a valid reason, but I was sure he was cheating on me and I wanted to expose that part of it. So I just ignored all these for a while, mentally preparing myself for divorce. I even kept my elder one away from him so that she doesn't miss him enough when we separate. I tried many times to peep into the screen while he unlocked it, but I was unsuccessful. Once there was some emergency and I needed to call the pediatrician and I was unable to find my phone. I asked him to unlock his phone in a hurry and while he was doing so, I snooped on the screen to check the password. I was right all this while. He was cheating on me, not with one woman, but with multiple of them. After counting the number of women he had hooked up with after my pregnancy, it is safe to say he was a womanizer. He has slept with all sorts of women, paid escorts, women he met at a bar, and many other random women. I don't know. His last so-called business trip was nothing but a horror trip with one of his mistresses. I think she's a bartender. I packed my things right there, dressed both of my daughters, and decided to leave him right there. I didn't wait for the morning and called my dad to pick me up. He was terrified and asked me about it, but when he sensed my urgency, he just came over and took us. I came home and showed the evidence to my parents. My dad lost his mind and wanted to drive back to my place and beat the crap out of this man whore, but I stopped him so as not to get into any trouble. While collecting all the evidence from his phone, I didn't delete the history of tampering, so he knows that his deceit was exposed. The next morning, he bombed my phone with several calls and voicemails, pleading and asking me where I was. He was acting all concerned about his daughters, as where did I go with his daughters and he needs to see them and ensure they are safe. All these were so provocating that I wanted to kick and thrash his balls, but I didn't respond to any of it and let him suffer in confusion and uncertainty. Dad is in talks with his lawyer to proceed with the divorce papers. I'm never going to let him see his daughters. Anyways, he never cared about them. He was all about fulfilling his lust, so it doesn't matter to him. Ah, uh, yeah, going back to him was a mistake. Of course he was love bombing you. At least he gave you the hard evidence you needed in order to stay away from him for good. And you're right, he doesn't care about the kids. They're just a means to an end for him. He needs to maintain this false sense of perfection to the outside world. Update 2 It's been a month since my last update and I was literally trying to avenge him and guys, I finally divorced him. Congratulations to me. The fun part was when the divorce papers reached him. He asked me the reason for the divorce. Makes me wonder if I was a delusional person for so many years. Ex-mother-in-law visited me and tried her best to manipulate me into forgiving him. That woman was the reason why Steven's character was in the gutters. She was basically trying to advocate that men cheat during their wife's pregnancy and it is on women to control them and get back to shape and lure them back into the marital bed. Really? I told her that she can have her valuable lesson for her future daughter-in-law, the next victim whom Steve marries, and that I was done with her and her characterless son. She got mad at me that I had a big mouth and I didn't know how to treasure my marriage. She was trying to blame me for Steven's immoral acts. I asked her to leave because she was annoying me. I told her not to visit me again, not even see my child. He was not going on any business trips, but on a cheating trip. He has been to multiple hotels in different locations. At that point, I was wondering how he did not suffer from any STIs. I got myself checked. I freaked out when the test results came positive. The infection was too mild to show any symptoms. The doctor told me that sometimes it took months and years for the virus to show the symptoms but glad I tested before time and it was a matter of a few doses of antibiotics to treat me. That crap head knew that he was infected and he passed on the virus to me. My parents lost their crap on knowing this and they sued Stephen for deliberately infecting me. When the court notice reached him, he contacted me again, asking me to take back the case or he would file a case against me for the custody of the kids. He threatened me saying he had a lot of friends in law firms. I didn't respond to him, instead we both used those texts and voicemails as evidence in the court that he was threatening me. Anyway. He was asked to do an STI test during the case, and it came out positive. He had effing gonorrhea, and I won the case. I refused him any share of custody, and he was not allowed to meet my daughters. Yes, he had to pay the child support and cover all the medical bills for my treatment, 
plus one-time compensation. Now I'm looking for a place for myself, somewhere near to my parents' house. My maternity leave is ending soon. I will need their support for my girls. Thanks for all the love and support. Oh dear. Well, at least you know the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree with those two. Update 3. Hello all. Thanks for checking on me. Yeah, I'm doing better. Last month I got tested again and the doctor confirmed I had healed completely. Though there was a risk of dormant virus bouncing back, so I needed to get tested a couple of times more this year. There's something I wanted to share. Steven's infection got severe and he had to be hospitalized for a week or so. Ex-father-in-law called me and apologized on behalf of Steven and his mother. He said Stephen had been crying all day, repenting his actions, and all this while he wanted to meet his daughters. If Stephen's mother had called, I would have hung up right there, but his dad was always kind and nice to me. I said I'll think about it, but he pleaded and assured me that he would pick up the girls and then drop them safely at my convenience. I agreed. The next day he arrived with various sorts of gifts for the girls and flowers for me to pick up the girls. I requested the nanny to accompany them because the younger one is too fussy to be handled by anyone. The elder one came back happy after meeting her dad. Not that she was missing him that much, yet he was her father, and a year back, Stephen used to be a good father to her. I sometimes wonder if I'm doing the right thing to cut him off from my daughter's life, but I don't encourage that thoughts. Ex-father-in-law calls me sometimes to check on the girls and he informed me that the virus has infected him severely, affecting his fertility. He has been abstained from any sexual activity in the future, making it very unlikely for him to find a decent woman for himself. I don't know whether to be happy or sad about it. One thing I know for sure is that one cannot escape karma. In the last one year, Stephen has made my life a living hell, and there's no way he could have escaped that. I'm just ignoring everything and getting my life together with my daughters. It's difficult to be a single parent, but I and my daughters are strong enough to sail through this. Looks like things certainly did catch up to Stephen and bit him right where it hurts. Glad you're finally out of that one, OP. I'm so sorry that you suffered the way that you did due to his dirty deeds and horrendous lifestyle. Stephen is lucky that you even allowed him to see his daughters. We wish you all the best. You totally got this. What do you think? Do you think Stephen deserved to see his daughters after all that he did to OP? What would you have done? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time.